Hey guys, welcome to this Newton Law question. This one looks pretty interesting. So let's start by reading through all the information. So we're looking for general things like, do they tell us the direction that we're moving? Do they maybe give us some friction? So what we can see here is that they tell us that this force F exerted on the block at an angle of 30 degrees holds or it is at rest. Ah, that's interesting. So we're not moving at all. And it says that it is a rough surface. Okay, so there is going to be friction. Now, we still don't know whether the system is about to go to the left or whether it's about to go to the right. But then they tell us something very interesting over here. They tell us that the maximum friction on block P is acting to the left. That's important. So the friction acting on block P is going this way. So then what does that mean? It means that it means that block P, what is block P trying to do? Block P is trying to go to the right. And that's why the friction is acting to the left. Because remember, the friction always acts in the opposite direction that the block is trying to move. So this system is trying to go in that direction. That's important. Right, so let's start with the actual questions. The first one says, state Newton's second law. Now, this is the most popular Newton law definition that you would ask. Out of every 10 exam questions, I think I see this one eight out of every 10 times. So this one's very popular. Now, I'm gonna show you a definition, but the one that your teacher has shown you, it might be a little bit different. But the one I'm about to show you is the most, it's the one that I see the most often. And so there it is. Now, if you sometimes forget about what the definition is, or you can't remember which one it is, then always remember F net equals to MA. And then you must get A by itself. And if you had to get A by itself, that would give you F net over M. And so what it tells us is that the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Now, moving on to question 2.2, they want us to draw a free body diagram of block P. So we know for block P, it's got gravity. It's got a normal force. It has um, a tension force. And then there's a frictional force acting to the left. And there is an applied force acting to the left, or a little bit left and a little bit up. Now, some of you, you like to do your free body diagrams like this, but then some of you prefer to do it this way. Let me show you another way. You have the gravity, tension, normal force, friction. And then what you do is you take this force and you break it up into components. So we know that it's going a little bit to the left. So I'll call that F in the X direction. Let's just say that that's friction. And then it's also going a little bit up. And so we can say um, F in the Y direction. So pretty much what I've done there is if we have this force over here, then I broke it up into a X and a Y. And we know that this angle is 30. So we'll come back to this diagram just now. Right, now to be honest, I prefer this method. I think it is very good for students to use that method as it helps them when they have to calculate friction forces and things like that. Um, especially when they don't give you the friction, but they rather give you the coefficient. And then sometimes it's a bit difficult to calculate the normal force, but this diagram makes it a much, much better. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose that diagram, but you must choose what you are comfortable with. Right, now, I should actually draw this arrow coming out like that. I don't want to confuse anyone. That's Fy. And then that's the normal force. Question 2.3, calculate the magnitude of the applied force. So if you've watched any of these Newton law questions with me before, you'll know the approach that I like to use. Whenever it's two objects connected with a rope, then what I do is I always use a three-step strategy, and that strategy works pretty much all of the time. And so in that strategy, step one is to, to do a free body diagram 
on each object. Step two is to use fnet equals ma. Okay, I'm not going to fit that in there. Use fnet equals ma on each object. And then step three is to solve. And when we do solve it, it's normally simultaneous. So I normally divide my page in half. And so this can be for object P. And then on this side here, I'll do object R. So for object R, uh, the only forces acting on that one would be gravity. Some people say normal force, but it's not true. It's not resting on any surface, okay? And then there would be a tension force. Now, we need to have an overall idea of the direction. So we know it's not moving, but they did tell us that the friction force on P is acting towards the left. That means that the system is about to go to the right hand side and down. So it's about to do this, okay? And so let's choose that as our overall direction choice. So step one is done. We've done a free body diagram on each object. Now we're gonna use fnet equals ma on each one. So here we're gonna say, whoops, let's get a different color. Here we're gonna say fnet equals ma. And for this object, we will go right as positive. So what you now do is you just look at these forces here. And so the only forces would be tension, which is positive. Then the other two are negative because they're pointing in the opposite direction to what we chose as positive. So that'll be minus F, minus Fx. If you are someone that doesn't use the Fx and the Fy method, then you would have used F cos 30 at that point, or F sin 60, any of those is fine. And that would then be equal to MA. Now for this object, remember, we are moving downwards, not upwards. So gravity will be positive, whereas the tension force would be negative. Now we're just gonna go fill in whatever we can. So tension force, we don't know. The friction force acting on this piece here, they did give us that. They told us that the friction is 15 newtons. And so we can say minus 15 over here. Then the force in the x direction, so if you look at this triangle, in the x direction, you would use cos. So I don't know how you guys like to do this, but you eventually should end up with f cos 30, or actually, yeah, we can say f cos 30 for now, or you can just leave it as fx if you want. Let's just leave it as fx, actually. I think that's easier for most of you to understand. But if you went f cos 30, that's also okay. And then the mass is... Oh, they did give us the mass of P. I was about to say, what is going on? So it's a three kilogram block. And so that will be three. Now the acceleration is zero because it's. they told us that the system is at rest. And so that means zero acceleration. Now, if we move on to the next free body diagram, that's gonna give us Fg, which is eight times 9.8, .8, minus the tension force equals to eight times zero. So that was for this object now. And so we now end up with 78.4 minus Ft equals to zero. And so we can end up with Ft is equal to 78.4 Newtons. We can then plug that over here. And so we can say 78.4 minus 15 minus the force in the x direction equals to zero. We can now solve for the force of x or the force of f in the x direction and that would be 78.4 minus 15 and that's gonna be 63,4. That's not the answer, that's just the force of f in the x direction. And so if I had to come back up to this triangle that we made earlier, what we've just calculated is this 63.4, but what they actually want is just the normal F. And so you can use trigonometry now. You could say cos 30 is equal to adjacent, 63.4, over the hypotenuse, which is F. You could then get F alone by first multiplying it over to the left-hand side. 
Then you divide by cos 30. And you should get an answer of 73.2 Newtons. When I looked at the memo of this exam paper, their answer is actually incorrect. So if you've ever done this question before and yeah, let me know um, if it confused you or whatever, but the memo answer was completely wrong. They used sin instead of cos. So, I mean, you can use sin, but then in a different type of way, but you would still get to the answer of 73.2. Moving on to the last one, they say that the force F is now removed and block P accelerates to the right. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.4. Calculate the acceleration. Now, guys, you've got to be careful. What some of you sometimes want to do is you'll take this force that we calculated earlier and, or, or no, you would actually do the following. You would go down to our earlier calculation where we calculated the tension force and you'll say, oh, look at that, I've got tension. So I'll just use that in my next calculation. Guys, that is completely incorrect. Remember that when we solved these two, we were solving it because we're under the assumption that there was no acceleration. See, zero acceleration. But now that there is gonna be acceleration, the tension forces are going to change. So we have to restart. We cannot use that value. And so if we have to look at the original free body diagram, all of the forces, uh, or that, that the force F has been taken away. So that can be removed. And this part here can be removed. And so this is our free body diagram. Now, we don't know what the tension force is and we can calculate the friction, but we also don't know what acceleration is. So guess what guys, we're gonna have to use a three-step process again. And so now we are accelerating like this, they said. And so I'm gonna do the free body diagram of P and then we can do the free body diagram of Q. So for P, it now has a tension force acting to the right. It has got friction. They did tell us there's friction. There's a normal force and there's gravity. Then if we do the free body diagram of, or oh, I'm calling it Q, R is what I meant. That one has gravity and the tension force. So some of you might be saying, yeah, but Kevin, this part is the same as the previous one. I understand, but the acceleration is not zero anymore. So when you use F net equals MA, you can't put A as zero. So it's a brand new question. And so step one is complete. Now moving into step two, which is where we use F net equals to MA. Now this object we're assuming right is positive. So that's gonna be tension force minus the frictional force equals to its mass times its acceleration. Then for this object, it's gonna be F net equals to MA, but it's going downwards. And so that's gonna be gravity as positive minus the tension force equals to its mass times acceleration. Now we need to go calculate the friction force. Now they did tell us that the coefficient is 0 0.4. So we will have to use the friction formula, which is the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. And so sometimes you have to be careful about normal force, but if you look at this free body diagram, the normal force is exactly the same as gravity. There's no weird angles or anything like that. So we can just say that the friction force is gonna be the coefficient which is 0 0.4 multiplied by the normal force, which would be the same as gravity. So that would be three times 9.8. And so if we're to calculate the friction, we would get 11.76 Newtons. So now I can carry on with this part of here. So we can say tension force minus 11.76 equals to 3A. And then for this next one, we know that the gravity is eight times 9.8 minus the tension force equals to 8A. 
Now we just need to solve these simultaneously. So I'm gonna get FT by itself over here. So that would be 3A plus 11.76. And then I'm gonna get FT alone over here. So that would be FT equals to um, eight times 9.8 .8 minus 8A. I can then make these two expressions equal to each other because they both equal to FT. So we can say 3A plus 11.76 equals to 78.4 minus 8A. Then I'd get 11A on the left and 66.64 on the right hand side. And then if we had to divide by 11, we should get 6.06 .06 meters per second to the minus two. And that's what they wanted for this question. If they wanted you to also calculate the tension force, then of course you could just take that value that we calculated and you could have plugged it back in to any one of those equations. And so there we have it guys. Thank you very much for watching.